But one of my favorite stories is I was living in Costa Rica and I had some friends there um, and we went exploring and they're like, come on, we have to go to this festival. And it was way in this back town and way, and you only get invited if you're part of this local crew, right? It's sort of this huge family in a collective space in a small little country. And so when we got there, it was just all about meeting all these kinds of people. And they showed me all these funny stories and jokes. And I remember it being the first, probably my favorite story, not that that doesn't happen all the time, Time, but it's my favorite story and that was the first time I felt like wow I'm really part of an international community and that really is important to me and so um, it was sort of one of those moments I think that changes the way you see everything and so I'm really grateful for that um, most recently of course uh, we just came back from Germany and got to spend some time with refugee kids and that for me was sort of the other end of the spectrum of um, I wasn't as proficient as I have been in Spanish as I, I'm definitely not proficient in Arabic or Farsi and so it was trying to to figure out what we do with that and it was amazing just the way you can relate even without um, speaking a common sort of structure but having a common language of wanting to understand each other and spend time together so that was a lot of fun too. Hola, soy la profesora Sykes, um, I'm the director at the Center for Applied Second Language Studies here at the University of Oregon. I also teach classes on second language acquisition, teaching methodology, and my very favorite, which is interlanguage pragmatics. So I'm really interested in how people both communicate their intention and their meaning and um, understand other people's meaning, knowing that very often sometimes we actually say things that we don't mean and vice versa, we mean a lot of things we never say. Um, and so it's a lot of fun. I really love the kind of work that I do, which is ultimately about human connection, right? So language learning uh, for me is how people um, connect with other people all over the world. Um, I've been really, really lucky in my life in that I've gotten to meet people from lots of Spanish-speaking countries, but also other countries all over the world. I just got back from a trip to Germany where we're working with um, refugee uh, populations learning German and thinking about ways we can really facilitate their understanding of um, German and living in Germany, um, whether that's for a short term or a long term period. So it's a really fun thing to get to do. Castles, the Center for Applied Second Language Studies, is one of 16 national foreign language research centers um, in the country which really focus on um, transforming and working with language education in the country and so our goal here is to support all things related to language acquisition we work really closely with the UL Language Council and so locally thinking about how we provide resources for teachers uh, we have an e-portfolio system for example called Linguafolio Online that is being used and made available to all language instructors on campus and as a result all students taking languages on campus and so that's sort of a state-of-the-art it is a state-of-the-art tool that we um, are working with here and making available to students. And then also we work very closely with the Language Teaching Specialization Program in the Department of Linguistics. Um, and through that we provide internships for students, so the opportunity to work in a national research center as well as work on projects that have an international impact. And then also that's where my faculty appointment is and where I teach classes. And so keeping that connection and collaboration is really important as well. We have a GTF position, a graduate teaching fellow position that always works at Castles each year as well. And so we're excited for that kind of partnership. We also build a lot of place-based augmented reality games, so where you go out into the world and explore and do lots of really fun things um, in finding clues in neighborhoods. And in this case, we're, this year we're working on a project to um, survive after an er the aftermath of an earthquake and working with a professor in geography to think about can we map certain spaces and certain social media posts, for example, and working with his students then to help think about how language serves in those areas. Areas. And so that's been a lot of fun as well. So to get students, for students wanting to get into language, my biggest piece of advice is take risks and find someone you really like to talk to. Um, and so yes, of course, classes are really important and all the kinds of work that we're doing to make sure you get the best language experience at the University of Oregon is great. But also finding a place that you connect with and a person that you connect with. For me, that's always been really important. I first, very first studied abroad in Spain when I was 15 because of a friend of a friend of a friend. Um, and I'm really, 
really grateful for that experience because I think it really changed my trajectory, both career-wise and personally of where I was going. So any opportunity you have to spend time in your target language or the language that you're trying to learn can be really important. So what we're doing in the Global Scholars Hall is really thinking about, can we create immersive spaces where they may not otherwise exist? And so what does it look like to live on a floor with 20 other people learning German or French or Chinese or Spanish? Um, and I'm forgetting what Japanese, I want to say all five because I think it's important. And so uh, really then what does it look like to live on that kind of floor with other learners of your language, whether that's Spanish or French or German or Chinese or Japanese. And so what we're doing is uh, really exploring the residential space and creating those types of connections that we know are so important to language learning. I think languages can change the world. I really do. I believe that human connection is the way we do that. And really to understand someone is to speak their language and also have them understand where you come from. And so for me, that is probably the number one tool we have to facilitate peace, to facilitate intercultural understanding, to understand why the exact same word or phrase may or may not work in different places. And what does that look like? And if we can sort of come to the table with that kind of human understanding, I think we'll see a lot of change or we see a lot less stereotyping, a lot less miscommunication than we might typically see otherwise.